So on page 175, uh, we get the aftermath of Robert's uh, sexual assault by the group of soldiers. And Finley is doing something interesting here with the words on the page. So he's using uh, the form of the text, so the way it looks on the page, to sort of reiterate or um, reflect uh, the content of what this passage is all about. So in the aftermath of Robert's uh, assault, he is, you know, feeling fragmented and uh, broken. And um, again, we have a reiteration of this pattern that has occurred throughout his life where he can't fully comprehend something, right? So he stammers and uh, he has a difficulty trying to sort of wrap his mind around uh, what just occurred. So we get these separate lines, sentences sort of standing, um, spaced, double spaced on the page, and it kind of reiterates, you know, just how uh, fragmenting or breaking, uh, the breaking point that Robert has reached. Um, so it also kind of conveys the mental state, so his psychological state after uh, experiencing this, how he almost is sort of um, broken and um, t separated from himself. It's kind of a disembodied moment. Um, so we can look at his behavior. So Robert stood in the center of the room. He wanted a clean shirt. He wanted a clean pair of underwear. He wanted his pistol. He looked behind the door, he looked underneath the bed, he pulled out the drawers of the dresser one by one, he dumped them on the floor. He lifted the mattress and pulled it sideways across the bed, nothing but an old magazine. He looked beyond the washstand, dust. He tipped the water jug, water. He threw the jug in the corner, it broke into sixteen pieces. He tipped the dresser, nothing. He knelt behind, beside the bed and ripped at the mattress, pulling out great loops of horse hair and dropping them onto the floor. He tore the ticking off the pillows and the air filled up with feathers. Gun, gun, he wanted his gun. So we're given sort of these little snapshots, fragments, sometimes just one word um, to and sort of like mimics or uh, represents Robert's train of thoughts, so his sort of uh, immediate needs uh, in this aftermath of what happened. And there is a lot of symbolism in these uh, items as well. Um, the fact that he wants his gun uh, suggests that, you know, perhaps uh, he is, he would act in violence and anger if he had his gun there uh, and do something drastic. Um, uh, there's also uh, elements of symbolism in regards to the water jug and that being broken. Um, so water we know has been associated with uh, Harris uh, and also with Rowena to some degree. Um, and then the broken jug also kind of recalls that earlier moment in the brothel where he threw the leather boot and it shattered the mirror. And then also some of these details are interesting, the great loops of horse hair being pulled out of the mattress, the feathers. So there's elements of sort of animal uh, products being uh, used here. So you could interpret this in a lot of different ways, but, you know, Finley is doing something with symbolism in uh, how he's depicting uh, Robert's psychological the trauma of what he's just gone through. And perhaps this is something that uh, he also reiterates uh, when Robert uh, burns the photograph of Rowena. So following this moment, uh, his old friend Poole uh, returns and delivers his kit bag. He also hears the news that Bonnie Castle has died. Um, Robert, at this point, he says he wishes with all his heart that men could embrace, but he knew now they couldn't, mustn't. He said goodbye quite suddenly. So there's something interesting going on as well in terms of uh, his desire to 
uh, say farewell to Pool, to hug him, to embrace him as a friend, but he can't. And then uh, he sees he, there was everything that he had, the mutilated mattress and opened his kit bag. Everything was there, including the picture of Rowena. Robert burned it in the middle of the floor. This was not an act of anger, but an act of charity. So this is kind of a sim symbolic gesture um, protecting Rowena or the memories of her. Uh, so he wasn't just, he's burning the photograph, but he says this is not an act of anger, but of charity. So to do something uh, with charity would be to do something kind, a kind gesture. Um, so the burning of the photo could be an act of sort of just a representational act, a symbolic act of separating uh, his past from what's occurring in the present, which is, you know, uh, devastation, uh, destruction. Um, so he's no longer that man that he was once, and he's kind of protecting the innocence of his childhood and Rowena, what she represents to him is um, sort of, again, not part of who he is now. Or at least he wants to sort of preserve that in a way and protect it from being soiled or corrupted. So in the aftermath of this assault, uh, Robert is uh, shown to be sort of psychologically scarred. Um, he is still uh, heading towards the front lines again, uh, but he's sort of described as um, numbed, and he has this kind of, uh, on page 182, he's described here, uh, his body was completely numb, and his mind had shrunk to a small protective shell in which he hoarded the barest essentials of reason. Uh, so Robert is sort of withdrawn within himself, and becomes sort of numb and cold and distant. Um, but all around him seems to be uh, reiterating this destruction that he experiences personally. Uh, and there's military police everywhere at this point. So Robert's not the only one who is uh, disillusioned at this point with the war. Uh, so the military police would be those uh, guards who would look for any soldiers who were deserting their positions. And as the war went on, larger uh, amounts of men were, you know, just uh, deserting their posts and uh, and they would uh, leave their post and then just uh, try to take off uh, because they no longer wanted to serve in the army um, because they didn't feel, you know, that it was a just cause or they felt that they were being used and exploited or they were just being sentenced to death. Um, so if the military police caught you and you were a deserter, uh, they could kill you on the spot. Uh, so here on 178 is described, the job of the MP, the military police, was often quite brutal. In the trenches before an attack, it was their responsibility to see that everyone went over the top. Their orders were to kill any man who refused. It was done from time to time, but Robert had never seen it. So the military police are there at the fork of every road, uh, making sure the soldiers uh, do their jobs, follow orders. And again, there were direct consequences if you didn't follow orders, right? So you could be killed, you could be apprehended and called a traitor, you could be uh, put on trial where you had to defend your actions and they can still sentence you to death or uh, they say that you have shell shock and maybe spare you, send you to uh, one of those convalescent homes where you, you would have to be treated for uh, mental illness. Often you were put to death by a firing squad so they would line you up, blindfold you, and then uh, shoot you in the back sometimes. Uh, so there was, you know, you can look at these statistics, more than 3,000 sentences of death were passed between 1914 and 1920 uh, for deserters. And uh, so there was a real, real consequences for if you uh, left your post. So the whole purpose of the military police was to make sure that you did your duty and you followed orders, uh, even if you no longer believed in the system or the cause or 
uh, felt you were heading towards your imminent death, uh, you just had to follow the orders of your commanding officer, even if they were uh, crazy or mad or power hungry, whatever. So uh, Robert's uh, mental state at this time is uh, he is, you know, wounded scarred from the events and all around him is chaos and destruction uh, bombs are going off um, everywhere around him and he eventually uh, talks about or he meets on his way uh, he's looking he hasn't been to the trenches yet but he is heading towards the British line and then he sees the body of um, who he discovers is Clifford Purchase. So you'll remember Clifford Purchase was his old friend and the body is just lying in the ditch uh, and there was a bullet hole or bullet shot in his back. So it's kind of uh, insinuating or you can infer what might have happened to Clifford Purchase who you remember Clifford Purchase was Robert's childhood friend. He believed the war was a chance, a heaven sent chance to become a man. He thought it was very, he took it very seriously, believed in it. And now he was here, uh, he had been an officer, he had been shot in the back and was sprawled face down. Robert rolled him over, carefully thinking he might still be alive, but he wasn't, he was quite dead. It was Clifford Purchase. Uh, so I think it, you can kind of, uh, I, I'm the way I interpret it, I don't know if this is the same way that you guys do, but I think it's sort of insinuating that Clifford Purchase was a deserter as well and maybe left his por po uh, post and uh, was shot in the back by the military police. So even somebody, a young man who believed in the war um, at the start uh, no longer sort of uh, believes in it at, at this point. So Robert is not the only one who is feeling disillusioned. So uh, Robert's conflict uh, in this last part of the book sort of centers on his um, antagonistic relationship with Captain Leather. And Captain Leather was introduced earlier in the book. Uh, he was the one who told Robert to go and uh, set the mortars in that large crater uh, which nearly killed the men um, when they were uh, had the gas attack and Captain Leather is the man who sort of uh, just plots you know he has a map in his mind and sets the men tells them what to do so he's the one who gives the orders but he doesn't really care or know about the men as individuals uh, there's also this section where he mistakes Robert Ross for another soldier named Roots so he doesn't really even know the names of the soldiers who he's telling what to do. For him it's just about his his reputation and giving orders and asserting his authority. Um, and in this instance uh, Robert goes against his orders, uh, Captain Leather's orders, and uh, it results in Robert being uh, called a traitor and then eventually um, Robert will uh, sort of abandon his post and he actually kills Captain Leather. So this is what occurs. This is part of the infamous uh, history that uh, Robert Ross is known for and why he is a controversial character. Uh, so on page 182 we get a depiction of uh, Captain Leather. So there were uh, near the front lines and they're being shelled and then Robert went inside at one point to request of Captain Leather that he be allowed to take the horses and mules he had just brought forward and make a strategic retreat with them so they might be saved but Captain Leather who was underneath the table at, a at the time was adamant in his refusal what would it look like he said to Robert we should never live it down so Captain Leather here his his uh, attitude is to preserve his reputation right you can't retreat uh, it's all just about sort of saving face and proving yourself by going forward doesn't matter how many lives are lost um, so this is part of his kind of uh, authority and bravado 
and then Robert wants to save the horses. That's his uh, position. He wants to.